YouTube. Today we're going to be restoring the paint job on this 97 Honda Civic. We're going to be using a buffer, a wool pad, because the other one is a sponge and this car has some pretty heavy oxidation. Just so you guys know what oxidation looks like, let me get a closer look here for you. Oxidation pretty much looks like the paint is burned. Then once it's been restored, it'll look like this. To begin, you're obviously going to need a buffer, and for the pad we're going to be using, you're going to need a specific backing pad. Now the backing pads can be removed simply by pressing the bonnet right here, and holding it, and spinning it, and they'll come off. Now I'm going to be using a backing pad that isn't meant for the wool pad, but it works, and it's going to be this one. Now, obviously I recommend you use the ones that are meant for the, the pad, but I'm just going to make do with this because it's a Sunday and I'm not going to go to the store right now because it's probably not going to be open. Anyways, we do have alternatives like this one right here that they sell also at Harbor Freight just like this tool. And this one's taking a beating already obviously, not by me. I lent it and yeah, they screwed it all up. Anyways, this will work good for light oxidation, but this car has extremely heavy oxidation. So. What we're going to do, this is also for swirls, so you can buy this orange one, they're like 10 bucks at Harbor Freight, they're not that expensive. This is the compound I'm using, and it works really good for this purpose. It removes sanding scratches up to 1,300 I believe is what it said. In our case we're going to end up using uh, 1,500, and it works pretty good for this, so it's enough about this compound. Let's talk about the machine. So this one is a 7-speed machine. We're going to be using it from 2 to 3 at most. We don't really want to go to 4 unless we have to. Or if you're really quick and you can know how to use it. But for the most part, we're going to stick uh, 2.5 to 3. And that is a roughly about 1,500 RPM at no load. But mm, yeah, we're, we're putting very light load. You don't need to put pressure when polishing and buffing. To begin, let's clean the surface we're going to be working on. Okay, so now that the roof is clean, we can get started with the sanding. I've gone ahead and bought 1500 sandpaper. Let me show you really quick. So this sandpaper is wet or dry. We're going to be using it for wet. And we're going to probably only use this sheet. We don't need that much. It's just to remove the heavy oxidation that the machine is going to have trouble with. We're going to be sanding in a straight line motion, back and forth, and little areas at a time to make sure we get everything evenly. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. This is what the sanding looks like. It's removed a lot of the oxidation and now the buffer is going to remove all the scratch marks from the sandpaper. With the polisher, have you placed everything together. You have your disc and everything on there, your pad. All you need to do now is apply the compound. You don't need too much compound, but don't put too little either. So this is about how much we're going to use. That's all we need. One, one ribbon of compound. What I like to do so that it doesn't splatter everywhere. I'll put it flat and I'll hold the disc and move it around like that just to make sure it gets in there. Now you're going to be doing about a foot and a half of area per ribbon of compound. Your speed, I'm going to use it at, at 3. If you're not too uh, used to using this, use it between 1.7 around there to 2 until you get that uh, used to using it.
So I have finished up the uh, all the buffing. It looks extremely good. I did not cover some plastics, which was a horrible choice. So now I have pink on the plastic, so I'm going to have to wash them very well, armor all of them, make them look original again. So when you do it, make sure you put uh, painter's tape on the plastics to help protect it. And after you've polished and buff, I mean buffed all the oxidation off and sanded, you're going to need to be waxing because sanding removes a thin amount of layer of clear coat. So you don't forget to be waxing your car every few months, especially in the harsh seasons. So let's go ahead and wax this car now. This is the final product. It looks very, very clean, reflective, and smooth. Alright, well, thanks for watching. If you haven't done so already, subscribe and don't forget to like the video if you like the video. Alright, thanks for watching.